that pessimistic attitude basically becomes you because you are you are spending most of your time around that, surrounded by it. This here is the power of osmosis. Osmosis means that if you, it, it means basically taking stuff from a high concentration. There's a, in this group of people, that's six people, five out of six of those people are pessimistic. That means pessimism is very high in concentration. Five out of six, that's how much concentration it is. All right, so right here, pessimism, five out of six is that. And optimism is, guess what? One out of six is all the optimism that you got going on. Which one of these things are you more likely to start becoming? It's that one, because it's exerting the higher force. Okay, welcome back to another video, everyone. Today's topic is your real best friends. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this, and let's go ahead and define who your real best friends are. Now, I define in this scenario, your real best friends as, here's this, the people that you spend the most time around. Now, not everyone is going to like that answer, but you will see why what I'm saying here does actually apply quite profoundly to your life. So, they say, right, in any part of your life, whatever's going on, that you are the average of your five closest friends. So let's write that down here, average. Average of five closest friends. And here's the deal. It's not just friends, but also who you spend most of your time around. So the reason why this right here might be different than who you would consider your five closest friends is because you might not spend most of your time around your five closest friends. Think about it. A lot of the times you have to be at work. A lot of times you have to be running errands or taking care of business in your life. Maybe you're in school. Think about who, which humans on this planet do you actually spend the most amount of your time with? Yes, you can include some family, maybe your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, maybe your children. That does uh, play a role here. So take that into consideration. But we're also talking about people that are separate from them. But for example, let's just go ahead uh, and talk about spouses or a boyfriend, a girlfriend, just any kind of significant other. If that person you spend most of your time with, if that person is completely unaligned with you on your values, you're going to start to feel it. You're going to feel like, man, I always have to explain stuff. I always have to explain what I'm doing. I have to, we have to have conversations about how I should be doing this or that or whatever's going on. We bump heads a lot, maybe, or maybe your person, they could be very um, supportive of what you're doing, but it's just not really, uh, they're not able to support in an active way. That's okay. What isn't okay is when it starts really um, cramping your style, let's say. Can I use that term on here? When it really starts subtracting away from what it is you're trying to accomplish. Let's say you're trying to become uh, better with your money, but you're with somebody that's a spend, 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 spends. You see where I'm going with this? That kind of thing. That's not going to be okay with you, or I suspect that it isn't. You're never going to get where you want to be if you have a situation or a relationship like that. No offense to whoever's significant other, anything like that. This is just science right here. This is the year, the average of the five people that you uh, spend the most time around. Now, your closest friends, yes. All right, but when I say your real best friends, it's not just your closest friends, but rather who you spend the most time around. All right, so, and people you spend the most time around, right? The most time around. This is very profound, and you, I'm sure, have heard this at one point or another in your life. Now, why is this so important? Well, because we, as humans, are sentimental creatures. We become sentimental when we spend a lot of time around somebody. Unfortunately, the reality is, especially if you want growth, you're going to have to not spend as much time around the people that are supporting whatever it is you're growing in. That doesn't mean they're bad people. That doesn't mean you have to cut them completely out of your life. 
for some of y'all, that's exactly what that means. So some of y'all already know, like, man, I have this person that I'm around all the time, whether it's a significant other, whether it's a best friend that's screwing up a lot and you're having to bail them out a lot, whether it's your boss that you can't stand is always putting you down. Some of those people, like, straight up need to be cut out of your life. But in most cases, they don't have to be cut completely out. You can just swap them with other people for the, this, uh, for the time, right? For this, where did I say that? I didn't even put time here, so let's just put time up here. This is important. You need to swap them and be spending more time around the people that lift you up, that are for furthering your goals. And like I said, at different times in your life, you need different kinds of people around you more often. If you're spending time, if you have, if your five closest friends at work like to do, I don't know, they like to go out to drink a lot. Nothing wrong with going out to drink necessarily, this is just a for instance here. We're saying that, hey, my five closest friends like to drink a lot, they like to party, they like to gossip and whatever. That's this, some of that is okay. So here are your friends. Let me make sure to draw five of them. Here are your friends. And guess what? Guess who is in the middle of that circle? That's you. In the middle of all of them. Here's you. And all of these people, not you. They're your friends, okay? And all of them like to, I don't know, all of them like to drink, let's say. That's what these people are thinking. Drinking. Again, don't really have a problem necessarily with drinking. It's just a for instance. You can swap that out for spending money, like too much. Going out to eat too much. Partying too much. Okay? And you, what you're thinking is, you're thinking, hey man, I want to have an investor mentality. Now this doesn't have to just be money. Obviously drinking costs you money and will take you away from that uh, investor mentality a little bit. But it's not just that. It's also just the, just the uh, psychological energy that you have with each other. If you're, if you're investing your time in drinking, and instead of investing your time in other things that are going to lift you up, that are going to get you farther along the path that you want to be on, okay? If you're investing your time doing other things, then the stuff you spend time doing the most, <laughs> that's what's going to, that, that's what you're going to become. You ever hear that adage, like, you are what you eat? Well, this is also true. You are what you think about, and that you are what you put yourself in, meaning you are what you involve yourself in most of the time. And when we talk about your five closest friends, they have a almost magical effect on your subconscious mind. Lots of people go, hey, I'm fine. People might be drinking. It doesn't have to be drinking. They might be like, hey, I like to, uh, we like to take our money and put it together and go on vacation a lot. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But if you're having an investor mentality or you're having to put back money, or you're having a lot of credit card debt right now, right now is not the time for you to be going out on vacations, especially if it spends a lot of money. The issue is there's a thing called peer pressure that we've all heard of, but it's more than that. Peer pressure isn't just your peers going, hey man, come on, let's go do this, come on, come on, come on. There is that, there's that component of it. Think about this, this is profound. There is that component, but even when they're not doing that, they're still doing it in a sort of subconscious way. Because if they're all here wanting to be drinking and going out and they're just talking about it around you and making plans for later, even if they don't say, hey man, you need to come too. Even if you've told them, hey, I'm gonna be doing this, this investor mentality, I can't be going out with y'all as much right now, it's no offense, it's just, this is something that I've gotta take care of. A lot of the times people will be like, okay, yeah, we understand. But if you stay around them most of the time, you'll still hear it. You'll still see them make the plans. You'll see them doing their stuff on social media or they'll be talking about it later. Like, hey man, remember last night or whatever it is. Those things are still peer pressure because your peers are exerting a pressure on you that they don't even mean to a lot. They don't even mean to do this a lot. And that is gonna start changing this to that, okay? Humans have finite willpower, and the more you start going one way or the other, or rather, the more you have people around you that want to go this way, right? Let's just link everybody up into this, uh, this thought right here. All of these dudes have that drinking thought. You have this. But the more 
that's around you, it'll drag you into it. It's alluring. It's a, you, you don't even realize it's happening most of the time. Does that make sense? So when I say your real best friends, the issue with this is this doesn't even have to be your friends. These people could be people that are just near you. Maybe they're colleagues. Maybe they're even people that you don't consider friends. You might consider sort of enemies. Or maybe they're people that you, you know, like I said before, you bump heads with. Or maybe it's your boss or something. If you have, let's say you have a boss, right? You have a boss that has a lot of negativity. This is what we're going to do. We're going to take this down for a second. I'm going to switch this board with another one so we can draw some more. Let's do this. So we can draw some more and have some more example up here. So check this out. Let's say, let's say, here's you, okay? We already established that this dude right here is you. But let's say, here we go, you, you're purple. Let's say you have this around you. This is your boss, okay? And you probably have some other people around you. Let's say you have a, not just a boss, but let's say you have a um, spouse right here. And that's them. Right here, here's your spouse. And let's say also that you have to spend time around a colleague, okay? So this is, let's say worker. Make it easy there. And there's a worker there. And then there's another person. Let's say, okay, well, when I'm not doing those things, what am I doing? Well, I have a best friend, okay? Here's your best friend, the one you would actually name your best friend, right? That's them. Here's your best friend. And, forgot the N in that friend. Okay, and let's say, and then one more person that you have, let's say uh, your brother. This is, this is actually your brother. Now, here's the deal with all of these people. Let's say that all of them have a negative attitude. One way or the other, somehow you manage to surround yourself with five people that are kind of on the pessimistic side, all right? If all of the blue people, so let's say blue people, which is everyone that's not you, pessimistic, and I may or may not have spelled that wrong, but you kind of understand what I'm saying here. This is their quality, and you're like, dude, Everybody, every time I talk to my best friend, he's like, man, he's down on his luck. His, uh, his life is maybe in shambles again for something. Some other girl just left him or some other guy just left her. Or, I mean, or whatever the combination of that you want to come up with. But we all know those kinds of people. But there's also my spouse, man. My spouse is always talking about, why you work so much, honey? Why, why can't we go on vacation? Why can't we do this? And maybe nag a lot. Not everybody has that from their spouse, okay? This is just an example. But let's say they do. Let's say that they're pessimistic about a lot of stuff. Oh, you, I don't see why you keep working that job because they don't, they don't like you there. You're never going to get anywhere, blah, 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 blah. And you have a worker that's like, dang, man, I hate this job. This job is just, it just brings me down. These people don't know what they're doing here. I can't stand it. And you're listening to that all day long. And when you call your brother, you're like, look, bro, I, I'm kind of sick of the people that are around me, man. I'm trying to be more optimistic because here, here's you. Purple equals optimism or optimistic, right? That is what you're trying to go towards. But remember, you are the average of your five closest friends and the word friend can be replaced with just people that are around you. That's why the title of this is, what did I say it was? Your real best friends. These people, if you spend more time with them than anyone else in your life, those are your real best friends. Even if this worker is just a colleague and not necessarily a friend, your best friend is your best friend. Your brother is like, man, some brothers are like a best friend, some aren't. You know, it's family. It's however you feel about that. Your spouse may or may not seem like a best friend. Your boss, sure as hell, is probably not your best friend. So at least half of this list here are people that you might not even uh, label as friends in the traditional sense, but guess what? Like I was saying, these are your real best friends because your brain, that's what it thinks. The people that you spend the most time around, it's like, those are the people that we're going to take our advice from, that we're going to understand how to operate in the world from. Does that make sense? Your brain can't tell the difference because you're around all the time. This is peer pressure because you're seeing 
this pessimism 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 you talk to your boss your boss is like man we didn't reach our sales goals or man there's too much overhead or too many people are getting overtime or people are being late or people that and they never say anything good that's what happens guess what happens that pessimistic attitude basically becomes you because you are you are spending most of your time around that, surrounded by it. This here is the power of osmosis. Osmosis means that if you, it, that means basically taking stuff from a high concentration. There's a, in this group of people, that's six people, five out of six of those people are pessimistic. That means pessimism is very high in concentration. Five out of six, that's how much concentration it is. All right, so right here, pessimism, five out of six is that. And optimism is, guess what? One out of six is all the optimism that you got going on. Which one of these things are you more likely to start becoming? Is that one, because it's exerting the higher force. So if you want to become an optimist, you got all these other people around here. Those are your real best friends, man. Whether you like it or not, it kind of sucks to hear that. But here's the nice thing. You can, like I said, swap them out. Some of these people you don't ever need to see again. If you, if you move jobs or something, that boss and that colleague there, you don't, probably don't even have to ever see them again. If your best friend is getting on your nerves and is just so pessimistic all the time, well, here's the deal, man. This, this is your life. You want that optimism? You want to have the investor mentality? You want to be doing better or gaining more knowledge? And you don't want to be drinking as much. Maybe you don't want to spend as much money or something. But when I say pessimism, let's just say you can swap out pessimism for any of those words. Blue people, drinkers or something. Blue people, um, complainers. Pessimistic is about the same thing, depending on how you see it. But it exerts an influence on you just by being near you. It's like, it's like a radioactive sort of energy. Now, yes, it is true. Your optimism, even though it's just one of six, does have a little bit of an influence on all of these people, but it's not enough. You know why? Because in this group of people, that group for each of these people is the same ratio. For this person, for your best friend, if he was in this group of people, now your best friend probably doesn't know all these people unless they work with you, but let's say they do work with you and they know all the same people and they know you. So in that same group of six people, your best friend has the average of these five, but with those five, they still only have five of, of, of the whole group, okay, being, um, they still have five being pessimistic. So in, in, in that case, it would be four of five. Let's put four of five here. We should have done that in a different color. That's okay. And this is one of five because we're not, we're not counting him. You see what I mean? But your best friend, hey, when you look at all those people, there's five people there, but four out of five of those people are these pessimistic people right here, this pessimistic then most of what they're getting is that pessimism. Only one out of the five is that optimism. Do you see what I mean? So the optimism has a little bit of an effect, but it has no, no, it has no chance against that. Do you see what I'm saying? So when you talk about the group dynamic, the whole group is six people. The group dynamic is heavily pessimistic. It's five out of six on average. That's what the margin is that there's, that's how much pessimism. There's five pessimistic things that go on for every one optimistic thing. This is how these things work. That's why those are your best friends. Now, like I was, now I was getting to, you have to upgrade these people or swap them out. You don't have to kick all these people out of your life necessarily, but if your best friend is getting on your nerves, and I'm sure this has happened to a lot of you, it doesn't even have to be your best friend. It could just be a friend that you see a lot. But if your friend is getting on your nerves and stuff, you've got to spend less time with them. If they are giving you less than good results in your life, they deserve less than the best amount of your time or the best of you. Do you see what I'm saying? This is this. You have to look at it in those terms. Now, I know we all have sentiment like, oh, we've been friends since we were kids or whatever the case is. Everybody, for the most part, deserves a chance at like, um, a chance to be redeemed, for sure. But they have to do the same thing. This works on them too. Your best friend, if, he, if they're really pessimistic, you gotta be like, look dude, you gotta cut that crap out or I'm gonna have to not spend as much time with you. We hang out like every other day or something. I might only hang out with you once every two weeks now because you're doing that or whatever the ratio is for you. If you hang out already once every two weeks, you're like, man, I can only see you like once, a, once or twice a year now because you're dragging me down. If they're your true friend, they'll understand. 
And they'll be like, yeah, you know, I, I can kind of see that. In fact, I'm around too many of those people myself. And you got to tell them, hey, you got to turn all the people that are around you purple, dude. They got to be that optimism. They got to. And if your friend does that, then they will become more optimistic. And it works with anything else. Like I said, whatever your mentality is, this isn't about pessimism and optimism. This is about whatever you want to become, look at all the people around you. If you're in college and you know a bunch of people who work all the time and they barely have time to study, no offense to those people, but if the, peop the five people you spend your most time with in, uh, with, uh, in college, they work so much that they just really don't have time for any, any studying or any like uh, getting together in clubs and uh, advancing their academic standing in whatever way. If they don't have time for that and you spend most of your time around those people, it'll start to rub off on you. You'll start trying to work more. You'll start being like, well, I don't even really have things I can do here in college that, have, that are going to... Uh, that are gonna advance my academic standing. Do you see? Not that those people that are working so much, not that there's anything bad about that. Maybe they're in a stage of life they gotta do that. We're just taking this as an example. It works the other way too. Guess what? Once you get yourself into, if you are in school and you wanna start making good grades, you need to have these five, the, the five people around you that you spend the most time with need to be doing that. They need to have that goal. They need to be studying, getting in these group sessions. They need to be doing maybe extracurricular activities with the school, whatever it is, just getting involved. And then it works in your favor. You have a lot of things great around. That's why, that, what, that's why they say the rich get richer. You know why? It's because the rich hang out with rich people. And the osmosis, it like feeds off of each other. Now, if a rich person went and started hanging out with a bunch of broke people who are broke because they're spending all their money, they need to watch out because they're going to start spending a bunch of their money and they're going to become one of those people. Nothing against people who are broke. Some broke people are broke because, well, hey, I'm broke right now, but I'm in a stage to where I'm consuming a bunch of knowledge, stuff like this. I'm getting people around me as much as I can that aren't broke, that understand the flow of uh, money, like cash flow and debt and all of those things. So some broke people, and you'll know who you are if you're one of these uh, one of these people, they're on their way, that's fine. The best, what, the best thing they can do is be like, okay, number one, you need to get around a bunch of people. If your goal is to have more money, get around a bunch of people that have it. This isn't about them giving you anything except for this group dynamic, this energy, right? You learn by osmosis here and the peer pressure, people can peer pressure you into being to good things. Peer pressure is a tool just like anything else. You could be peer pressured into, hey man, I want to uh, learn how to save money better or invest wisely. And you get those people around you and you make that right there, that five out of the six people, including you, your five closest friends, most of them are like much smarter than you. It will just pull you up. All right. So in his book, The uh, Thinking Fast and Slow, Daniel Kahneman talks about a concept called regression to the mean. And basically that, that concept is used in many different ways. The way I would apply it to this is the mean is like the average of what everybody is. So if like you hang out with, let's, let's just say for example, five millionaires and you are not a millionaire. So, and you put all of you together and they're the five people you hang out with the most often, especially when you're talking about your finances, their energy will just pull you up to the mean. And the mean mathematically would be each of them makes 5 million, so uh, or 1 million, so it'd be 5 million plus, let's say you made like 50,000. So the, so the mean would be 5 million and 50,000 divided by six. And whatever that number is, it'll, it'll start pulling you up towards that. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, but that, I mean, that's just averages in general. But remember, you're the average of the closest people that you spend your most time with. That's why I'm saying like, hey man, that board down there, your real best friends, because your brain can't tell. You might like this person the most and this and this, but it's the people that you spend the most time around and put the most effort into and are exerting the most peer pressure on you. Those people are your true best friends. So thank y'all so much for being here for this one. Do like and subscribe, please. Uh, those do really help me out a lot and um, have a beautiful day.